Hello and welcome to Just the Facts. I'm Eric Max Kaplan, and this is a new tutorial series from ED Films, where we keep it short and simple. A prerequisite for this lesson is that you already have a working knowledge of After Effects. You should know your way around the interface, and you should know how to install and access plugins and scripts. So let's get started. Today I'm going to show you how to make an IK-driven character using the Duic auto-rigging tools. Here's our puppet. This character was made in a paper cutout style in Photoshop. I made each piece as a separate layer. One thing to keep in mind is that the auto-rigger doesn't work on 3D characters, meaning characters that are 3D in After Effects space. So all the 3D switches on this character have been turned off. So, step one. This one's easy. Import your character. You'll want to have it set to retain layer sizes. Step two. You're going to want to rename your joints or bone layers correctly. I'm going to start by figuring out which layers are the bones. I'll change them to a different color so they're easier to find later. Now it's time to talk about naming conventions. You don't have to name your layers properly, but if you do, it'll make things go a lot quicker later on. We'll start with the prefix. If the bone you're renaming is a symmetrical bone, like it's the left or right arm, you're going to want to start it with the letter L or R and then underscore. If it's not a symmetrical bone, such as the neck or pelvis, then you just leave out the prefix, just start with the name. So there are specific bone names that will quickly drop into the auto-rigger. They inform you what those names are as you're going through the rigging process, but I'll leave them right up here for reference. And now the suffix. Not every bone will need a suffix, but if you have bones that are in series, like for the spine, you're going to want to put an underscore and then the number. You can put it as underscore one, underscore two, Something like that. So an example of a layer named properly would be L underscore hand, or maybe spine underscore two, and that's it. Step three, adjusting the anchor points. So right now we're going to move the anchor points on the bone layers to where we want them to bend. So that's, for instance, the shoulders or the elbows, the knees, the ankles. And you can do that easily by using the pan behind tool. The hotkey for that is Y. So once all your bone layers have all their anchors in the right place, you can move on to the next step. Now you might want to take the chance to parent all your non-bone layers. You want to parent them to the bone layer that they're going to be hanging off of. For instance, all of these layers are going to be attached to the head. So now we're finally going to create the rig. You're going to want to start by selecting all of the bone layers. This is an important step, because otherwise the auto-rigger won't know which layers you want to use. With everything selected, you can go into Duic, then pick the auto-rigger. I'm going to go with plantigrade because I'm doing a regular human, and then click full character. Now, as you can see, if everything was named correctly, it should automatically populate these lists with the bones that we chose. So click through all the screens and just make sure the information is correct. You'll want to make sure that your spine or torso layers are in the right order, and the diagram on the left is a good reference for that. I'm not going to be using a tail, so I just make sure that it's set to none. Then you click OK, and you're done. Now wait for it. Almost there. Now you have a rig. Before you're totally finished, you're going to want to do some tests and make sure everything's working. See the arms move with IK. You can stretch a little bit, that's good. So here I'm playing around with the hip controller and I'm noticing the knees are bending backwards. That's an easy fix. You just go to the, your effects pane and then you just check this box here for the IK. And they flip back the right way. So you can test out all the parts and make sure they're all working correctly, like my guy is here. And then you're done. You can now animate him. You can make him walk or run, dance, fight. Make him fight with his roommate over leaving the tinfoil seal on the sour cream tub. Make him do anything you want. And that's it. That's the end of the lesson.
Uh, hope you learned something. Uh, let us know if you think it was quick enough. That's the whole point of this lesson series. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.